Well, I'll just talk a little bit about um, kind of what's inspiring today's class. And for those who come in late, they'll, they'll catch it on the, <clears throat> on the recording. But right now, Brahmi, it's you and me who, and whomever we've got on Instagram. And um, yeah, so I mentioned in some posts, and I think even in our first class, that it's really impossible for me to tailor each class for every single individual. And so we kind of do some generalizing, but still focus on either qualities or seasonal changes or environmental factors or even emotional stuff that's going on with us. Um, and so this morning I'm inspired. I'm actually a little not inspired because <laughs> uh, my pitta has been a little um, extra and I think it kind of burnt me out a little. Uh, so we're going to work with a pitta pacifying class this morning. Um, and one of the emotions that is associated with pitta is the critical, judgmental and anger energies or in emotions. Uh, and I don't often find myself a very angry person, but I do find myself very judgmental and critical of myself. And uh, I think we all do that to some degree, but sometimes it's like a little overwhelming, right? Our, our self beratement becomes uh, like a bully almost. And so I, I want to work this morning in our yoga class to kind of release some of that self-criticism and judgment and uh, um, the harping on oneself that we, that we tend to do. And it's great uh, for the equinox to kind of transform and let go a little bit of that heat because we are moving into a more hotter time. And so going in with a little bit more balance. I know most of the, the country right now in the world is in a, I guess not to not say. <laughs> a bit of a colder uh, climate or situation than we are dealing with here in Hawaii, but that doesn't matter that there is still often pitta that we're dealing with no matter hot or cold. So Alicia looks like she's waiting in the waiting room. Hmm. I don't know if you heard that, Michael, but we're trying to send you the link. We got your sign up and uh, a little technical difficulty there. You had it, babe. You just have to copy the link from the bottom. Oh, it's in my email. Thanks for your patience, Brahmi. We just have a couple of people still trying to get in. <laughs> Good morning, Alicia. How lovely to see you. I was just sharing with Brahmi and uh, the people who are joining for a few minutes on Instagram that we're going to be working with Pitta this morning and kind of more the emotions of Pitta that can lead to a little bit of self-judgment and criticism. So let's get started by just finding a, a centered place. And go ahead and close your eyes. And let your hands rest in your lap with the palms facing up. So one of the, the things we really want to try to incorporate this morning with our Pitta class is the attitude of surrender. And so <clears throat> every opportunity that we have in our body and in our breath and in our attitude towards our practice this morning, the more we can soften and just be with what is versus trying to grasp or pull or, um, you know, force something that is not happening. We want to let all of that go. So allowing our hands to rest palms up so there's no gripping or grabbing that there's just already we're starting with an attitude of releasing and surrendering heat, judgment, criticism, and anger. I'm just taking a few breaths here with that kind of intention starting to settle within us. Maybe even taking a few breaths where you're inhaling through the nose and exhaling through a gently opened mouth so that your jaw can relax. 
and the tongue can relax. Oftentimes when we're in a state of pitta, we tend to clench the jaw and grip with these uh, massive muscles of the jaw. And they can create referred tension and strain all the way down the neck and shoulders. And that can continue to radiate throughout the body. So softening the jaw, relaxing the belly. And now let's go ahead and close the mouth. We'll take three breaths in and out through the nose and doing our best to increase the length of the exhalation and slow down the speed of the, uh, sorry, slow down the inhalation, make it more um, deep and then also slow down and lengthen out the exhalation. We'll move into our Ganesh Sloka to open the space and help to harmonize us with each other. But more importantly this morning, because we're working with Pitta and specifically these emotions um, or tendencies towards self-criticism, I want you to listen for your own sounds this morning. I want you to let these chants uh, harmonize all parts of you. And even if you're not able to uh, join in the sloka, you can kind of hum along and just that vibration within you will help to unite and harmonize all the cells, thoughts, feelings, and emotions in the body. So we'll start with one ohm and then I'll move right into our Ganesh sloka. Take a deep breath in. And if it feels right for you, go ahead and exhale and bring the hands together in front of the heart. And then our next breath in will begin on. Um. come back to the lap. Taking two more nice even breaths with the eyes closed. <laughs> One more little note. Keeping your eyes closed that oftentimes when we are in a very kind of flared up, self-critical, self-judgmental, angry at self kind of moment, 
there's a tendency to not listen to self. And so I just want to impress upon or bring some more emphasis to this idea this morning that we're really, really, really doing our best to listen to that internal message, to what our body needs, healing into the emotions and not neglecting them, and just doing our best to be present with self this morning. Even though we're in a class and you're listening to me give cues and directions, you still have an internal voice that you can connect to, that you can listen to. And so I would really like to direct us all to that more internal, soft space this morning. And if you do experience any self-criticism or judgment come up as we move through class together this morning, pause, come into this wide need balasana that we'll start in this morning and just take a few deep breaths to center yourself, to come back to that heart energy and then, and then move back into the asana with us. All right, let's bring the hands together in front of the heart and rub them together. Create some nice heat in the palms, remembering that the palms are connected to the heart. And then cup your palms over the eyes and take three breaths, almost as if you could breathe in and out through the eyeballs or the eyeball socket. And just let the warmth that's radiating from your hands sort of soften and soothe the eyes. The eyes are such an important part of our nervous system. And so when we get ramped up or overwhelmed, it's a good idea to give some attention to these vital nervous system organs. And go ahead and blink a few times into the darkness of your hands and then gently draw them away from the face. And from here, we're going to move into child's pose. We'll come back to some more warming up, Brahmi. I see you there touching your neck. Uh, but we'll start with bringing the big toes together, taking the knees wide, as wide as your hips at least, and then send the hips back to the heels and like settle into the space between the thighs. Let your belly relax there. Walk your hands out, bring the forehead to the floor. And again, taking every opportunity for surrender this morning. Let the palms turn up. The shoulders can relax more on the back and rest your forehead down on the floor. And here, take three deep breaths and really feel the belly expand into that space between the thighs. It's important when we're working with pitta, the fire and water element, that we don't do too many poses that um, require long compression. So that's a lot of forward folding that causes heat and compression to the internal organ. So by having our knees wide, we allow for some heat to escape from the body. From here, go ahead and just turn your head side to side a few times and massage the forehead. This place of skepticism and judgment. Just soften those, those lines across the forehead. And then you turn your palms down and just walk yourself slowly back up onto the knees or shins. And if you'd like to have a blanket under your sits bones or a block even can be helpful to sit in Vajrasana if it's hard on your knees. In fact, you can get yourself up quite high if you have any pain in your knees. So, so we're just gonna sit here for a moment and start to warm up the joint. So go ahead and reach your arms out in front of you and just point and flex the finger, uh, sorry, the wrists a few times. Just draw them under and draw them back. And then go ahead and open and close your fingers three times. Squeeze the fist. Good. And then hug your thumbs with the rest of the fingers. Bring the wrists together and go ahead and flip the wrists in and out.
Great, and then go the other direction. Michael, here. Good. All right, and then bring the fingertips to the tops of the shoulders and extend them out just three times, drawing the fingertips back and out, doing our best to warm up all of the joints. Good, and then fingertips to the shoulders, big circles back with the elbows and really stretch across the front of the chest. One of the main seats of pitta in the body is the heart. And so we wanna allow for some space, expansion and release of heat all along the esophagus and the trachea and the heart area. And then forward a few times. I get stuck sometimes in those backward circles because it feels so good across the chest. All right, and then from here, go ahead and make your way onto your hands and knees. Move that block out of the way. Lining up the wrists underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips. Go ahead and tap your feet out. That helps to release lactic acid that builds up in the feet when we're kind of stagnant. And then from here, turn the toes under, send your hips back towards the heels and then lift your knees up so that the shins are parallel to the floor. And just kind of stay here for a second and activate the energy into your feet. So you're reaching out of the heels and you wanna imagine that you could squeeze or wrinkle up the mat between your big toes so your inner thighs are active. And then press into the arms a little bit more and reach back. So my hips and knees are not moving back. I'm just kind of lengthening out of my shoulders. And then start to send the hips up. Keeping a gentle bend in your knees, start to pedal out the feet. So remember that this um, intention to work with pitta means we have to be very mindful of that part of us that wants to push into these postures and have perfect form right just be easy today good and then come up high 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 onto your tippy toes and flip your heels over to the left side and as you do that ground down and through your right palm and reach evenly through both shoulders so we get a nice stretch along the whole right side of the body from the outer left part of the foot all the way up the piriformis into the hips and the back Another breath here. This is helping to release heat from the liver and the gallbladder. Then go ahead and flip the heels to the other side. And again, really ground down this time through your left palm, reaching evenly through the shoulders and stretching the whole left side of the body. Give some nice deep breaths. Good. And then back up onto the toes. Lift your heels up as high as they'll go. Press into the hands, send the head and neck through the arms and then melt the heels down towards the floor. Take two breaths here. Knees are still gently bent. We're trying our best not to lock into any joints. Good, and then go ahead and walk your hands back to meet the feet. Walking into Uttanasana, a standing forward fold. And even here, let's just heel toe the feet a little bit wider. So there's space for these internal organs to release heat versus build heat. But in here, take a hold of opposite elbows and just hang over those strong legs. Kind of shaking side to side. And then go ahead and shake your head no. Shake your head, yes. Good. And then bend really deeply into your knees so that your torso is just laying on your thighs. Bring the hands up to the hips or to the top of the thighs. Draw the elbows and shoulders back and then press into the feet. Stand all the way up. Good. And from here with this, the feet in this kind of wide position, let's just swing out the arms. Uh -oh. Got my head cut off. Oh, there we are. Okay. Let's walk up. My mat is extra sticky. Walk up to the top of the mat. Step your feet so that they're hip distance apart. 
Bring the shoulders up to the ears, press them back and down. I'm just gonna turn so you guys can see me a little bit better. And then from here, open your jaw as wide as you can. Let me just come from where here. So we wanna open the jaw really, really wide. And then we're gonna shift it side to side because as part of our pitta tendency, we can clench the jaw being very critical about things. So open the jaw and then shift it to the left. And then to the right. Good. And then just open and close it three times. So here we are standing in our mountain pose. The knees are unlocked. The heart is lifted. Good. And we're going to move through a couple um, rounds of Chandra Namaskar. We did this last week, but I don't think any of you were in class, so this is awesome. So for Chandra Namaskar, we incorporate a squat or malasana. So we want to start with our feet pretty wide. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, gather your hands together in front of the heart. From here, inhale and send the arms all the way up. As you reach up, look up towards your fingers and reach through your ring finger. This is the uh, finger associated with the water element. And then exhale, hinging at your hips, fold forward with a nice long back. And if you have tenderness or soreness in the back, you can always bring the arms in to protect the back a little bit more. Good, hands touch the floor or the shins. And then here we're gonna inhale, lengthen out the spine. And as you exhale, bring the hands together at the heart and sink the hips down into malasana. So it's important that we keep our knees in line with our toes. And if your heels aren't touching the ground, that's okay. That's not um, surrender, remember? <laughs> okay, from here, plant the hands. And inhale, send your left foot way back. And bring the knee to the floor. And from here, inhale and take the arms up overhead. And again, always in this class this morning, we're going to focus on the water element. So reaching through that ring finger and maybe opening the heart, coming into a gentle back bend, finding this crescent moon shape in the back side of the body or the west side of the body. Good. Go ahead and exhale the hands back to the floor. Step your foot back and we're just going to move right into child's pose, hips to the heels. And here, inhale and sort of slither or slide through. So I kind of try to keep my chest low and move right into Bhujangasana, anchoring my pubic bone and just lifting the heart. I'm not using my hands. And I'm lifting my head from the space right behind my ear so my neck stays long. <clears throat> Exhale back to child's pose. Let that breath out. Keep the nose wide. And then inhale. Standing on the shin, sweep your arms up over head, reaching through that ring finger, coming into a modified uh, camel pose. Good. And then exhale, send your left foot forward, hands come down, touch the floor, and then inhale back up, reaching through the ring finger, finding that gentle crescent moon in the west or back side of the body. Exhale the hands to the floor. Turn the back toe under, lift the back knee. Engage your abdominal muscles and squeeze the hips together as you step forward into Uttanasana. Hands to the shins, inhale, lift your heart, look forward. Exhale, fold. Stick your thumbs in your hip crease. Draw the elbows and shoulders back. And then inhale to come up with a nice long spine. Reach the arms up at the top. Then exhale to your heart. As the hands come back to the heart, step the feet apart. And then inhale, following the arms up, soft knees. Exhale, hinging at the hips, fold forward. Nice, strong belly, long back. Good. Hands to the shins. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, the hips down into Malasana. So this time in Malasana, let's squeeze the arms with the knees and resist the knees with the arms so that that low back and the sacrum and tailbone can all get really long and release. Let's plant the hands. Inhale, send your right foot back. Exhale as you bring the knee to the floor. And again, inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. 
Nice big breath here. And then exhale the hands to the floor and shift back into child's pose. As you inhale, start to come forward, slithering the body into Buddha Jandasana, anchoring the pubic bone and lifting the heart. And exhale again, pressing back to child's pose. Wide knees, roll the breath, inhale, stand up on the shin, sweep the arms up overhead, gentle back bend here. And then exhale the hands down as the right foot steps forward, touch the fingers down and then inhale them back up. As you reach up through your ring fingers, go ahead and sink down through that hip. Take a breath. Exhale the hands to the floor. Turn the back toe under, lift that knee, squeeze the hips together as you step forward into your Uttanasana. Hands to the shins, lift the heart. Exhale, fold. Hands to the hips, elbows and shoulders back as you Protect the low back to come up with a strong belly, reaching up at the top, and exhale to your heart. Nice. For a moment here, rest your hands at your sides and just take two breaths. Keep your heart lifted, feel into the body. We are generating some heat, so we want to make sure that we take opportunities to let it release. And stable in our feet, off knees. As we move through the next two rounds, we're going to do our best to flow a little bit. And I mean to flow with the breath. So even if I'm a little bit behind your own movements, you stick with your breath. The breath is who we want to listen to for these next two rounds. And I'll do our, my best to keep us together. Empty the breath. Take a deep, full inhalation. Exhale the hands together in front of your heart. And then inhale, let the arms float up. And exhale, falling over like a waterfall, falling the hands all the way down. Hands find the shins. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, malasan. Inhale, plant the hands. Left foot goes back. Knee comes down and the arms sweep up overhead. This is all on an inhale. Exhale the hands down, coming back to child's pose. Empty the breath here. And then let your inhalation flow and lift everything up overhead, standing on the knees. Oops, we missed Bhutangasana. We're going to do it now. <laughs> Exhale back into child's pose. And then slide through into your Bhutangasana. And lift the heart. All right, so we're surrendering and going through it. We didn't get it perfect. That's part of Pitta's problem. <laughs> so we're not going to correct it or indulge in Pitta in any way. Go ahead and turn your toes under here. Press up to your hands and knees. And then back to downward dog. Lift your left leg up slightly. And then exhale, step it through. And let the right knee come to the floor. Take the arms up overhead. So we're right back into our crescent moon. Exhale the hands down, lift that back knee, squeeze the hips together and come to the top of the mat, empty the breath. Gentle lift of the heart as you inhale. Exhale, empty. Soft knees as you inhale and take the arms all the way up. And then exhale to your heart. Inhale, follow the breath, let the arms float up. And exhale, hinging at the hips. Inhale to lift your heart. I forgot to step my feet out here. And then exhale right into Malasana. Inhale, send the right foot back. Knee comes down, arms go up. Exhale the hands to the floor. Step back into child's pose. Inhale, slowly through into Bhujangasana. Anchoring the pubic bone and lifting the heart. Exhale to child's pose. Inhale to your hands and knees. Sweep the arms up overhead. And then exhale, step the left foot through. Good. Let's do that again. Inhale the arms up. Bring the hands down. 
your pit is going to love this. Lift that back knee, and we're just going to do a little hop switch. So it looks like that. Yeah, let's try that again to the other side. Put them then back to right foot forward. And then step your left foot to the top. Empty the breath. Hands to the hips. And inhale to come all the way up. Reach up, look up. And exhale to your heart. Beautiful. Go ahead and stand in your Sama Siti Hi. So stable mountain pose. Knees are unlocked, hands are at your sides, palms are facing forward. Uh oh, we're opening the windows. It's getting a little too hot in here. <laughs> mm. Go ahead and close your eyes for just a minute. And if you can, see if a smile can find its way to your beautiful face. So we'll assist the body in the release of heat. So kind of heel toe your feet back together. Go ahead and look down at the toes. Lift them all up. Fan them out. And then set them back down. Good. Inhale, take the arms up overhead. Interlace your fingers and leave the index finger free. This is called Vira Mudra or Wind Mudra, which is very soothing for an overheated pitta. So reach up through the, the index finger and press down through your right foot as you hinge yourself over to the left. You're just doing a little crescent moon here, standing crescent moon. Try not to let your head drop. So keep space between the ears and the arms. Reach out through your arms. And then almost like you're doing a Bhujangasana, sort of lift your heart and let that left shoulder roll under a little bit more. Reach and stretch this right side. Good, inhale, come up. Shifting your weight into the left foot, kind of stomp down through that foot, reach up through the hands, and then exhale over to the right, shifting the hips to the left and shoulders to the right. Okay. Again, draw now your right shoulder underneath you so the shoulders are stacked, there's space between the ears and the arms. Reach out through your arms and then gentle Bhujangasana action in the back. Reach a little bit more. Beautiful. Stand all the way up. Reach up through your ring fingers. And then big open arms as you pull the arms back and down. Very nice. Good. From here, bring your hands to your hips. Right, and just lift the right knee up and rotate the ankle. And then go the opposite direction. Set that foot down. Left knee up. Rotate the ankle. And opposite direction. Go ahead and come back to the top of your mat. Finding that stable mountain pose, even weight in both feet. Take a deep breath in. Exhale your hands to your heart. And then inhale, take the arms all the way up. And exhale to hinge over the legs, coming into your Uttanasana. And from here, just step yourself back into downward facing dog. So again, make sure your knees aren't locked. And bring the feet together so that you're making a triangle between your hands and your feet. Your arms are going to be the base and the feet are the tippy top of that triangle. From here, inhale, take your right leg up as high as you can without losing the squaredness <laughs> of your hips to the mat. So the hips aren't opening, we're keeping them square. From here, draw the knee towards the nose and step your right foot through and then step the back foot in and come up into warrior, I'm sorry, yeah, into warrior one. So we want to bend into that right knee. And what's important here is that you're not trying to take your arms straight up, that you actually pivot or hinge a little in the hips so that your shoulders are slightly in front of the hips. And this will help to protect your low back. Beautiful. From here, go ahead and sweep the arms down so that they're in line with that back leg. And from here, we're going to transition into 
um, Garudasa and Eagle Pose. So we're going to lift that back heel up, push forward, take the right or left foot up and over as the left arm comes up and over, sitting down into Garudasa. So we interlace the arms and the legs. And at first, just pull your elbows down into your heart, but lift your heart up towards the, to the sky. Squeeze your knees together, your hips together, your ankles together. And then from here, keep the arms down. Step back with that left foot. Back into your warrior one legs. And then inhale, reach up through the fingertips. Send your elbows away from you. Deep breath in. Exhale, release your arms. And then take a big sweeping gesture as you inhale the arms up to the ceiling. And then exhale, touch the hands down and come into a lunge. Deep breath here. Plant the hands and step back to downward dog. Beautiful. Go ahead and bring the feet together. Take a deep breath in and send the left foot up keeping the hips squared. Exhale, slowly draw it towards the nose and then step your left foot down. The right foot comes in and we come right back up into warrior one. So the hips stay squared towards the short edge of the mat and our shoulders are pivoted or hinged forward just a little bit to protect the low back. Take two breaths here, reaching up through your ring finger and pressing down through the feet as if you could pull your mat apart. Good, lower the arms down. We're going to hinge a little bit more forward so we're in nice one line from the back of that heel to the top of the head. And then lift that heel, push off. And as you push off, the right foot's going to come over the left and the right arm over the left and spiral down into your Garudasan. So where your fingers are finding the center of your palm, that's a marma point called Palamadhyaya. And it's connected to your heart, one of the major organs for pitta, controlling all the blood, heat, temperature, and rhythm in the body. So give that a little pressure. Keep pulling the elbows down as you lift the heart. And then with control, we're going to send that right foot back into warrior one. Inhale the fingertips up, elbows away. Sink down in a little bit more. Exhale, release your hands. Inhale, big sweeping gesture up. Exhale, touch down, lunge. Beautiful. Step back into your downward dog. And then from here, shift forward into this high push-up position. And make sure you're protracting the shoulders so they're reaching out of the socket. We're not sinking into them like this. Good. Now from here, we're going to bend the elbows slightly and start to lower the thighs down. And then resisting gravity with the triceps, lower down slowly into Bhujangasana. Elbows pull back, shoulders pull back. Take a breath here. And then exhale, pressing up through the knees and back into downward dog. Good job, guys. Take three resting breaths in this downward dog. Let's take a couple of breaths. I'll try not to scream into the mic. <laughs> but let's inhale deeply. And as we exhale, just let out some sound. Do that again. Maybe even flutter the lips. Beautiful. Bring the feet together behind you. And inhale the right leg up. Again, keep the hips squared. Exhale, draw the knee to the nose. Step your right foot through. And from here, turn that back heel down. And cartwheel your arms up into warrior two. So go ahead and look out over that right knee. Make sure it's in line with the second toe. And then look forward. Like so that you're gazing out in front of your shoulders. Good. 
We're going to inhale, roll the palms up towards the ceiling, lift the chin, deep breath in. Exhale, turn the palms down, bring the chin to the chest. Again, inhale, roll up and open. Exhale, thumbs down, chin to the chest. Good, roll up and open. And then flip the palms over and gaze out over that right hand. Think a little bit more into that right knee. Release the left hand down to the back side. Turn the right palm up. Press into your right foot as you come into this revolved warrior. Good. Breathing into the whole right side of the body and continuing to release heat from the liver and, and gallbladder. Good. From here, inhale back up into warrior two. And then take your elbow down to that right thigh. Sweep your arm across the front and come into extended side angle. Beautiful, go ahead and shift your hips forward. See if you can find a little baby back bend in the back. Beautiful, exhale and go ahead and take both hands down to the floor. They're gonna frame that right foot. Turn the back heel up and step back to downward dog. You can always rest in child's pose here. Wide knees if you need to, take two breaths. And then bring the feet together. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it through gently. Turn that back heel down and again, cartwheel up into warrior two on the left side. Reaching evenly through both fingers, start by looking straight in front of your chest. Roll the palms open, lift the chin, deep breath in. Exhale, chin to the chest, thumbs go under. One more breath in, how open. Exhale, chin to the chest. Inhale, lift your heart. Turn the gaze to look out over that left hand and flip the palms down, reach evenly. Feel how strong you are. <laughs> That's your pivot <picture> talking. <laughs> All right. From here, release that right hand down, turn the left palm up, reach up and back as you press into your left foot, finding a nice deep stretch into the left side of the body and doing your best to direct the breath into the left lung. Release stretching and expanding into those intercostal muscles on the left side. Beautiful, inhale, coming up through warrior two, set the left elbow down on the left thigh, sweep your right arm across your horizon, and then up and under, we're gonna look under the armpit, finding a gentle back bend so you can send your hips forward slightly, and then reach back with your arm to find that extension in the back. Don't forget to breathe. One more breath here. Beautiful. Exhale the hands down, frame that left foot, and step back to downward dog. All right. From here, go ahead and bring your knees to the floor. Big toes together. Knees are wide. And settle back into child's pose. Make sure you have lots of space for the breath and belly, belly to breathe. And take two really long breaths here. And then have finding your way back to the hands and knees. Lining up the palms under the shoulders, knees under the hips, turn the toes under and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And go ahead and bring the feet together and raise the right leg up. This time, if you feel like you're into it this morning, you can rotate the hips open, but make sure that you press evenly still through your hands and that you even focus on dropping that right shoulder more so that you don't compress into the whole left side of the body. So reaching out through that right ball of the foot, maybe bend your knee if that feels okay. Keep your shoulders squared. And then flip the hips back over, 
draw the knee forward, step the right foot through, and turn the back foot down. And this time, straighten that front leg. We're coming into trikonasana from the ground up. So you might want to step your back foot in a little bit, and then rotate the left arm up towards the ceiling. All right. Okay, so this posture, trikonasana, three angle pose, we should be able to find three triangles in our body right now, is really good at releasing heat. So I want you guys to come and find your lower rib on the left side. And you're going to kind of like dig in there and pull back. Like you could pull yourself open just by pulling that rib up and back. And what you're doing is you're pressing a marma point called pliha, which is your spleen. The spleen is responsible called pliha, which is your spleen. The spleen is responsible for cleansing the blood. It's very important in our immune system. And it's a big pitta um, organ. So just give that a little bit more pressure as you roll the shoulders open. And then go ahead and extend that left arm up and over, almost like an extended side angle pose. So reach so that you've got a nice long line from your left hip to the outer edge of these left fingers. Beautiful. Go ahead and spiral down now, framing that front foot. Turn the back heel up and bring the left knee down. Good. From here, we're going to shift the hips back as the right toe comes up into this runner stretch. And make sure your fingers are wide. Mine are off the mat so I can lift my heart. And then do a little push up here. So inhale, exhale, fold over that leg. Inhale, come up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. And then exhale, fold. And just drape your body over that right leg. And you want to pull that right hip back as if you could slide it back towards the left knee. So you activate all these tiny little muscles around the pubic bone. Beautiful. Go ahead and bring your hands back underneath you. Send that foot back. And from your hands and knees now, we're just going to walk the hands forward slowly, keeping the hips high, but lowering the heart to the floor, coming into Anahata Asan. You can have your cheek on the floor, your chin or your forehead, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just opening that heart towards the center of the earth. And feeling your shoulder blades come together as they push the heart forward. Go from here, squeeze your belly muscles, shift forward, and come into sphinx pose as you lower the pubic bone down. Elbows are right underneath the shoulders. We're reaching up through the crown of the head, drawing the shoulders and hands back to pull the chest forward. Good. And then exhale, extend your arms all the way out in front of you, palms together. And then this is a prostrating posture, offering our humility to source or to any, anything higher than us. Or maybe we're just prostrating to ourselves. And here, bend your knees, sweep the feet side to side. Releasing any tension in the low back. Leg feet down. From here, bring your hands right next to your low ribs so that the elbows and wrists are in a 90 degree angle. Turn the toes under and either press up through your hands and knees or, hit to people, you love the challenge, come straight up through a push up and back to downward dog. Beautiful. Bringing the feet together. Inhale the left leg up. Open up that hip if it feels good for you, but press evenly through both arms. Don't let the, the arms um, splay apart. But bend the knee if it feels all right. Taking the heel towards the glute. And then flip the hip back over. Step through with your left foot. Bring that right foot in just a little bit. Straighten the front leg. Coming into Trikonasana on the left side. Keeping that arm up overhead. Yeah. All right. So same thing on this side. Go ahead and find this lower rib. Dig kind of up and under and then pull yourself open. Now you're pressing. It's called yakrut. This is your liver marma point. So this is activating good energy around the liver, gallbladder, 
and even into the small intestine. Take another breath here, gently pressing into that point. And then reach the right arm up and extend it all the way over. Really reach from the outer edge of that right foot all the way through your fingertips of your right hand, stretching into that low hip waist area. One more really full breath. And as you exhale, go ahead and turn the hands to the floor, framing that left foot. Bring the right knee down. So I fell last week and bruised my patella. So I'm gonna just put a little cushion there. Good, hands are wide. Off the mat, we're gonna send the hips back as the left toes draw up. And then three push-ups over this left leg so that the body can get used to the idea of where we're gonna ask it to go. It doesn't like to be forced to do anything. It likes to have its own opinion and its own commitment timeline. <laughs> okay, go ahead and fold now over that leg. As you drape the torso over the left thigh, do your best to activate the energy in that hip by dragging the heel towards you. So you kind of want to drag it back. It's not really moving. It's more of an activation in those muscles around the pubic area. Take another breath here. And then bring your shoulders underneath you. Are your shoulders underneath you? Don't do that. Just bring your hands underneath your shoulders. <laughs> and then walk the hands out coming into Anmahata Asan. Shoulder blades come together and they push the heart towards the floor. It's a very heart opening posture. Helps to release heat from the heart and anger from the internal organs. Beautiful, from here, we're gonna shift forward again into the Sphinx pose, but this time into a little Sphinx push-up. So keeping the legs and knees lifted, the shoulders are right over the elbows, hands are wide, there's energy reaching out through the back of the feet, the hips are a little high, but not sinking down low and not way pitched up and your heart is opening. So there's an opening in the clavicle bone across the front of the body. Beautiful. Go ahead and set those hips down and walk your hands out, lowering your forehead to the floor, coming back into pranam. Two deep breaths. And bend the knees here to release any Stagnation or tension breaking in the low back. And then rest. You go ahead and come back into that sphinx position. Elbows underneath the shoulders. And turn your left hand on the spin the other way. My break dancing move. All right. So from sphinx, just so I can see this other camera. Turn your left forearm parallel to the short edge of the mat, bend your right leg, reach back for this foot and you can take the ankle, the pant leg. If you can reach the toes, whatever you can reach, start to pull the heel towards the glute. And if you like, you can spin the elbow up, flip your wrist forward and kind of squeeze your toes as you pull the heel towards the glute. So the tips of the fingers and the tips of the toes are connected to 10 important organs. By squeezing them, you kind of activate and wake them up and give them a little attention. Now, without letting this foot sling shot back, slowly let it go. Come back through Sphinx, pressing down through the elbows, lift the heart, reach up through the crown of your head, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, turn the right forearm so it's parallel with the top edge, bend into your left foot, and reach back for that. Coming into the same shape on the left side, drawing the heel towards the glute. Get that foot cycle. So make sure you're not sinking into this elbow, that you're not rolling back. 
Yeah. Another breath here. And with care, go ahead and release that foot all the way back. And we're going to come into Makrasana. So now we're going to stack the forearms, turn the toes out really wide, take the feet wide so that the top inner thigh can kind of rest on the floor. And then bring your forehead to the forearms. And take three relaxing breaths. You can go ahead and bring your arms and legs back in line with your shoulder and hips. We're in this long, prolonged position. Palms are together. And take two breaths here. Go ahead and bring your hands next to the low ribs. Elbows are back. We're going to press up onto the tops of the feet so that we come into an Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, an upward facing dog. So as if there was like a giant fountain underneath your belly, press up. We're on the tops of the feet. The hips sink just a little bit and reach up through the crown of the head. Good. From here, start to lift the hips up, squeeze your belly. We're going to roll over the tops of the feet and come back into downward facing dog. Bring the feet together behind you. Inhale, take the right leg up. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale, set it down. Beautiful. From here, shifting forward into that high plank or push-up position. Bending into the elbows, lowering the hips down, coming into that reverse bhujangasana as you resist gravity with the triceps and come slowly down. Deep breath in. Breathe into the kidneys and the low back. And then exhale, turn the toes under, press up and back to downward facing dog. Take five resting breaths in this shape. Unlock your knees. Make sure you're not sinking into your shoulders, that you're reaching out from the shoulder socket. Two more breaths. And I'm going to shift yourself forward again into that high push up position. We're going to come down all at once, like we're moving into Chaturanga, but we're just going to move through it slowly. So shift yourself forward so that the shoulders are kind of in front of your fingertips and come onto the tops of the feet. Good. And as you start to lower down, you want to make sure that the elbows start to squeeze in nice and tight. So there is a moment in Chaturanga. And then continue all the way to the floor. Boom. Good. Forehead to the floor. Take your arms out to your sides and tented fingers. And from here, draw the heart and shoulders back as you lift into a very gentle Shalabhasana or Bhujangasana variation. And if you're feeling strong here, try interlacing your fingers behind your back, reaching back through the arms and lifting the heart a little bit more. The whole lower part of the body is heavy. It's grounded and it's keeping us anchored. Breathe deeply into the lungs. In yoga texts, they refer to the breath as being the food for our will. And so this posture really helps to expand the breath, to feed the lungs and the body with willpower. Unlace the fingers. Lay all the way down, turn your cheek to one side, and just rest for a moment for a breath.
And you bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Press up to the hands and knees. And we're going to cross the ankles and then sit back over the heels. And take your legs out in front of you. Okay. So from here, let's start by coming into a modified malasan. So the feet are wide, mine are as wide as my mat. Elbows are inside the knees, hands are in front of the heart. My spine is long, reaching up through the crown of my head. I'm going to take two breaths. Good, and then extend your left foot out and bring your right foot in just a little bit more. So we're coming into a modified Janu Sirsashan, but allowing all of this space so that heat can continue to release easily from the body versus our traditional where we're kind of compressing everything. So your right foot's at your side and there's some space between the inner thigh and your right foot. We're gonna flex the left foot and bring your right hand to your side for support. And then reach up through your right arm. Take a deep breath in and then exhale, fold forward, reaching towards the toe. Your right hip will lift, don't try to keep it down. And just reach for this right foot. Left foot, left foot, left foot. <laughs> Keep this foot engaged. So you want to keep activating the, the muscles in the front part of the thigh and, and the calf muscle so that the back muscles can stretch and release. And eventually, if it feels okay for you, you can draw the chin to the chest and look back behind you as you fold over the left leg. Press down through the center of your left thigh as you sit all the way back up. Come into this modified malasan for a breath. And then switch to the other side, extending the right foot out, bringing the left foot in just a little bit. Right hand comes to the side for support. Inhale up through the left hand, flex this right foot, and then hinging at the hips, fold forward. Maybe your foot is available for you. Maybe you're just got your hand kind of on your shin or in, in between. But keep flexing and activating that right leg as you hinge and fold a little bit more deeply with each breath. And maybe, maybe looking back behind you as you come into the full extension of this posture. Don't forget to breathe. One more nice long breath. And then press down through the center of your right hamstring as you inhale to come all the way back up. Finding your modified malasan for two breaths. And finding this communication between the knees and the elbows. So they're pushing against each other. Good. And then from here, go ahead and bring the soles of the feet together. Sit up nice and tall. And then take your thumbs to the ball, just below the ball of your foot. I don't know if you can see that right here. Another heart point, another pitta organ. So we're going to press into that point with the thumbs as we inhale, lift the heart, and then exhale, hinge forward and come down. You can let the elbows find their way into the knee crease to help push those legs down a little bit if that feels comfortable for you. You can also just come onto the forearms. You could come onto a block. Remember, we're surrendering today. We're not forcing ourselves to do anything we don't want to do. Three breaths here. Forward folds, all of them, are very soothing for the nervous system. And they're very soothing for our mental process, for that chitta vritti. And just notice as you come into this forward fold, what is the quality of your mind and thoughts? One more breath. Go ahead and come all the way back up, walking yourself up slowly. 
assisting the outside of the knees to come up and then extend them out. Actually, let's kind of come through a, a Navasana. So keep the knees bent, feet on the floor, sitting up nice and tall. Make sure you're sitting on your sit bones and not back on your sacrum. And then extend your arms out in front of you. Good, and draw the shoulders back. So most of the class we've been protracting and pushing our shoulders out. Now we wanna draw them back. And as we draw them back, we can lean back and lift the feet. So I'm gonna say, let's try to stay here. I'm sure there's a pit a part of us that wants to go here. <laughs> so let's just be easy on ourselves this morning. Good, and then from here, slowly start to roll all the way down and walk the feet out. Just take one resting breath. And now place your feet on the floor and take your arms out to a T. Bring the feet up and slowly lower the knees to the left. Follow them with your gaze all the way over. So we're looking the same direction as the knees are going. Let the knees settle and then like trace your chin across your chest to look out over the right arm. And take three breaths here. And as you breathe here, breathe in through the nose and out through an open mouth. Relax the jaw. As we do this, as we breathe with an open mouth, the tongue has a chance to rest in the lower jaw. And when we do that, we activate the lower three chakra. So by exhaling through the mouth with a relaxed tongue, you can activate and stabilize the energy in the muladhara, svadhisthana, and manapura chakras. So everything below the solar plexus. Very good for grounding us when we get spun out. Good to come out, look up at the ceiling first, then bring the knees up, set them down, straighten out your spine, bring the knees back in, knees and gaze slowly lower to the right. Once the knees settle, trace the chin across the chest and look out over your left arm. And again, in through the nose, out through the mouth. You can even try incorporating a little sound. Um, often in the lower abdomen, which really helps to relax the adrenals and kidneys. And to come up, look up at the ceiling first, then the knees follow. Good. From here, let's just hug the knees into the chest, keeping your head on the floor to start. Good. And then draw the chin into the chest and really wrap your arms around the fronts of your shins and give yourself a hug, like pull the knees into the chest and whisper to yourself. I love you, Brahmi. I love you, Alicia. I love you, Michael. I love you, Billy. Good, and then head back to the floor. Set the feet down. Good, and with your three middle fingers, I want you to press on the, um, the ribs just to the right and left side of your sternum. So your middle finger should be in line with the nipple line and then let your fingers kind of find the depression in between the ribs. Another set of marma points that is working on the heart, the thymus, the thyroid, and the solar plexus. Good, now take your thumb to the center of your sternum and let your ring finger find um, just below the xiphoid process. So just where your ribs come up and meet there, I think you all know where that is. So with those two fingers pressing into those points, left arm is at your side. And from here, go ahead and let your legs go long. So the body starts to relax even more.
And then go ahead and release that right arm out to the side. Turn your head side to side a few times. Good. And then squeeze your hands, squeeze your feet, and then squeeze your arms and your legs as tight as you can. Lift them off the ground about an inch, even the head too. Squeeze your face, squeeze all the body tight, 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 tight. And then release. Let it go. Take it out. And forget about it. I want you to let your mind and awareness connect strongly to the sense of sound. Listening to my voice and to the other sounds around you, near and far. Noticing how that perception of sound brings our attention to the space between us and that object. This is the akash of these elements. We're just living in it. Go ahead and shift your awareness now to your sense of feeling, the touch aspect. Feeling your skin on the floor, your clothes on your body, the weight of your whole body on the mat. Feel with all parts. Shifting again now to your sense of vision, keeping the eyes closed and just noticing the colors kaleidoscoping behind the eyelids. You may or may not start to see objects or people or places. Just enjoy the show. Now shift your attention once again into the mouth, to your sense of taste. Feel your tongue, feel your teeth, feel your saliva. Notice if you're having any cravings for any particular flavor, sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, or astringent. And finally, shifting now to the sense of smell, which is connected to the earth element. And just shifting your perception to that subtle space around the nostrils. Maybe you smell your own smell. Maybe somebody's cooking. Whatever it is, just let your attention rest on the sense of smell. I'll make one more subtle shift from the smell to the breath. Feel the breath move back and forth past the nostrils, into the soft palate, into the trachea, down to the lungs, expanding and stretching the whole body, and sending fresh oxygen to all parts. Take a moment to rest now, letting your mind wander anywhere it wants. Offer some gentle movement to the fingers and toes as you take a deeper breath. Maybe move the wrists and the ankles, starting to bring back awareness to the whole body. Bend the knees and the elbows. And then stretch yourself in two directions, fingertips and toes, top to bottom, side to side. And because we're working with pitta, I would like us all to roll to the right side, resting in this fetal-like position. Sorry, I have my back to you. 
And as you lie here for just a minute more, I want you to contemplate two things. One will resonate with you more than the other. So sit with that one. As you're here, I want you to imagine that you are either lying in embryo. So in that very safe room space. Or to imagine that you're lying in the hand of God. A moment to feel held, feel nurtured, to feel loved. And then very gently making our way back up to a seated posture. We're over time because we're focusing on not being so pitted today. I'm not going to care. And if you have to go, you have to go. If you can stay, please stay. It won't be much longer. I just want to take a few shitali breaths or shitkari, whichever one is better for you. So shitali is where we talk with the tongue. Pull the breath in, and then as you exhale, you want to press the tongue to the roof of the mouth and let the breath out. If you can't taco your tongue, you can pull the breath in through the teeth. But same thing on the exhale, press the tongue to the roof of the mouth, let the breath out. And this helps to internally cool down the body. So we're going to take five breaths like this, whichever you like. Two more, go slow. Awesome. Yoga helps us to become more stable in our thoughts, our emotions, and our connection with self and source. If you're feeling any of that, even just a little bit more, then we've done good work. Hands together in front of the heart. You know, chant our student teacher prayer to close the class. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Saha Viryam Karava Vahai Tejas Vina Vadi Tamastu Ma Vidvesha Vahai Om Shanti Shanti Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming. My pit to light, whether it's inflamed or balanced, <laughs> is able to recognize your beautiful light. And I'm so appreciative that you took time to spend with yourself and with me this morning. I'll sit here if anybody has any questions. Thank you so much and have a wonderful Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have a meeting, but um, I'll Thank see you, you soon. <laughs>
<laughs> bye, Brownie. Bye, Alicia. It was wonderful. I will see you next week. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.